Hello world and welcome to the vlog. What we have here today is part road trip, part rescue mission. Let's go. Ah. Yeah. There we go, need my belt. Buckle up kids. I am now driving to the neighboring city of Nazareth, which is only about 12 miles away. Uh, it's not a very pretty drive. The city itself is great and there are some really nice views and I think if you've watched any of my content you've seen some of them. If you haven't, well, check out, there's a link right here. From there I'm heading to the coast, to the city of Haifa. There's some really amazing, some breathtaking views from the place where I'll be. So I plan to take a little bit of time to show you that. I'm on a pretty tight schedule today. I have to go pick up this person in Haifa and bring him back to Nazareth and then get back home and I've got other activities in the evening. So I'll try to make do with the time that I have in between the activities to try to make this an interesting video. See that pyramid looking mountain right there? That's called Mount Precipice. That is where at one time the Bible says that there was a crowd of people that wanted to, to uh, throw Jesus off the cliff. That's where that was. I guess I should give you a little bit of a backstory on <clears throat> on what I'm doing today. This is a this started a couple of months ago when I met a through a friend of mine. I met I met this man who has been struggling with alcoholism for a, most of his 40 years of life. When we first met, this guy was doing pretty good. He started his recovery. He was sober for about a month. We spent some time me and my friend. We spent some time just just making friends with him and trying to encourage him and um, got him con connected with some, some other people. This right here actually is a rehab center that I work with. Uh, we tried, we introduced him to some of the people here. He was doing all right. He didn't feel like he needed any, uh, like any, any more help than what he was getting from us. About a month later, I stopped hearing from him and I found out that he fell off the wagon. And then the guy calls me like a month later, he's all drunk and he's slurring and he says, he asked me to come over so he can talk to me. I go over to his house, um, we have a very long conversation and uh, he ends up saying, admitting that he needs help and uh, he asked me to take him to the rehab center. So that's where I'm going now. He's been, for the last three days, he's been in detox in a different rehab center in Haifa. So I'm going to pick him up, take him back to Nazareth, where hopefully he'll continue for the next three months to work on his, um, on breaking his addiction. I have made it to Haifa. I'm on top of Mount Carmel. And the view behind me is the Mediterranean. There's something very unsettling in this whole situation with my new friend. When we were over at his house, having that long conversation, his mother was there. He lives with his mom. She's an elderly woman, beat up by life herself. And she was really upset. She did not want to let him go anywhere. She tried to dissuade him from making this change in his life. She, didn't, she couldn't bear the thought of him leaving her and living away for a while while he got his life together. What is it about us and hanging, I know I've talked about this before, and, but this is an extreme example. What is it about us holding on to things? She kept saying that her son is fine, that he doesn't need any help and he'll be okay and he'll get out of it. And it didn't matter for her that he was drunk here with his drinking buddies for the last month, as long as he was there with her. In every familiar situation, there is a false sense of security and control. And conversely, every new situation gives us a sense of fear. We need to realize that neither that fear nor that control are real. The only thing that's real is our need of change, our need to reinvent big chunks of our life. So let's go pick up this guy and hopefully get some good news about his understanding of the situation. I'll try to do a little interview with him. 
this is a test. I'm gonna try to set up my phone on my dashboard to see if I can have a conversation, an honest conversation without him thinking about you know being filmed or anything. Maybe just get a first reaction. I know it's a personal moment for him, so I don't want him to feel like I'm infringing or you know taking advantage of him. I'll blur him out and protect him, his identity. I just want to see if I can get an interesting point of view from him, from this experience that he's having. I'm now back home after dropping the guy off at the rehab center in Nazareth. I tried to record that conversation, but I left the phone on in the heat on the dashboard and it overheated and it turned off. When we got back on or back, got back into the car, I didn't think to check. I didn't want to spoil the moment. Anyway, that conversation was not very insightful. I was hoping to hear something interesting, you know, that the guy would tell me about this experience. It takes a while, it takes a lot longer than just a couple of days to break uh, the habits, to break, uh, to change the person's perspective on life. It's been a long day, but I think this is mission completed for now.